is a new thunder for dark matter radio i thank you for being here today you're about to find the truth the truth of it why donald trump wasn't kidding about or invade venezuela and why every african-american every so-called black person every original indigenous being in north america should be shaking in their boots right now why the civil rights movement's gone no more black power movement but the stopping of decolonization has come Hundreds of thousands of protesters, fed up with the government of Nicolas Maduro, flooded the streets of Caracas Wednesday. Venezuela's opposition leader, Juan Guaido, declared himself the country's interim president. Nicolas Maduro is a dictator with no legitimate claim to power. The National Assembly is the duly elected representative of the people, and through their constitutional system, now the interim president, uh, Juan Guaido, uh, it represents the will of the people. Because Mr. Pence doesn't have a job, now he wants to come and run Venezuela. I will say it like the Venezuelan people would say it to you. Thank you, go home. There's been an awakening. You are listening to Dark Matter Radio with your host, Ronnie. tragedy as an example in Venezuela more than two million people have fled the anguish inflicted by the socialist Maduro regime and its Cuban sponsors not long ago Venezuela was one of the richest countries on earth today socialism has bankrupted the oil rich nation and driven its people into abject poverty. Virtually everywhere socialism or communism has been tried. It has produced suffering, corruption, and decay. Socialism's thirst for power leads to expansion, incursion, and oppression. All nations of the world should resist socialism and the misery that it brings to everyone. In that spirit, we ask the nations gathered here to join us in calling for the restoration of democracy in Venezuela. Today we are announcing additional sanctions against the repressive regime, targeting Maduro's inner circle and close advisors. The embattled president of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, says he is ending diplomatic relationship uh, with the United States. This comes just hours after President Trump officially recognized an opposition leader as the legitimate president of Venezuela, and it comes after days of violent protests in the country. So let's first begin in Caracas with Stefano Posebon uh, covering all of this. And Stefano, can you give us a little bit of context uh, as to why Maduro would have said this, and, and where would these... Where would these diplomats go? Yes, exactly, Brooke. We're seeing history rolling up in front of our eyes. Earlier today, the president of the National Assembly here in Caracas, the president of Parliament, president of Congress of Venezuela, swore himself in as an interim president uh, with the support of the United States of America and of many other countries around the world, including uh, Canada, Paraguay, 
This triggered uh, an escalating reaction and Nicolas Maduro has announced just minutes ago that he is ending all political and diplomatic relationships uh, with the US and is giving them 72 hours, giving 72 hours uh, for the consular staff uh, to leave uh, Caracas or as early as possible. Really, situation escalating dramatically. We have seen uh, uh, clashes of words uh, played in front of our eyes for the past uh, two weeks. Uh, uh, the Vice President of the United States, Mike Pence, uh, spoke with uh, Juan Guaido, the President of the Venezuelan National Assembly here, to reiterate his support to say that the United States uh, are on the side of the anti-Maduro position here. And uh, to now we're seeing the reaction from Nicolas Maduro, who quite literally said, get out of Venezuela, Brooke. Now we have a new leader, Juan Guaido, in Venezuela who has promised to bring elections and constitutional order back to Venezuela and security back to the region. This uh, is not about foreign intervention in Venezuela. It is not an attempt to impose a result on the Venezuelan people. Democracy never needs to be imposed. It is tyranny that has to be imposed. Constitution. But what about if we look at the uh, international law, the charter, where, where is this based on? Are we simply uh, setting aside interna uh, international relations based on international law and uh, replacing them with international relations based on force? And China supports the efforts made by the Venezuelan government to uphold national sovereignty, independence, and stability. The meeting uh, which we are being forced to be present is another element of the strategy of the United States uh, uh, to affect regime change in Venezuela. We regret that in this unethical ploy, in its unethical ploys, the United States is involving the Security Council. Colombia has come here to the Security Council to ask the international community to demand that the life and well-being of Juan Guaido is upheld, and not just that he is protected, but also the members of the National Assembly and all those who fight for democracy. And indeed, we have called for the, come to call for the international community's support for all those Venezuelans who are sparing effort to build a better future. Belgium calls for the restoration of constitutional order in Venezuela. The presidential elections, which took place in May of last year, were in no way free, fair, or credible thus stripping the government of Nicolas Maduro of any democratic legitimacy. The main threat to peace and security in Latin America and the Caribbean is in fact the bullying by the United States and its allies of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, which is a flagrant affront to the popular will of the people of Venezuela and to the institutional framework of this country. I ask the question honestly, if we look back to the history, which country has been better after an intervention by the United States of America? Have we not discussed in this very Security Council the serious adverse impact and consequences of situations such as the current uh, situation in Iraq or Syria or in Libya? President Trump has upped his criticism of you and your administration since uh, the creation of the Constituent Assembly. And I want to read you a quote uh, from President Trump that he made, uh, a statement that he made at the General Assembly. He said, the Venezuelan people are starving and their country is collapsing. Their democratic institutions are being destroyed. The situation is completely unacceptable and we cannot stand by and watch. As far as I know, Mr. President, you haven't spoken with President Trump. If you do, what will you say to him and what would you say now to the American people? Al pueblo norteamericano nosotros siempre le decimos la verdad. I would say to the U.S. people the truth, and we've always done so. Venezuela wants only one thing, respect. The time of U.S. interference in the social and political life of Latin America and the Caribbean should be left behind. Venezuela is the object of desire of ruling circles in Washington for two reasons. Our riches, the riches of our country. We have the largest proven reserves of oil in the world. We have growing reserves of natural gas. We are number eight in terms of gas reserves in the world, and these reserves are growing, because on top of oil, we are also exploring some gas deposits. Now, Venezuela raised the flag of a new model of waking up the peoples on our continent, but they want to suppress this idea, this example. It's not just about Trump, because Trump is reading his notes. He doesn't even know where Venezuela is on the map. He doesn't even know where Puerto Rico is. He did not know that. 
He went to Puerto Rico and he came there during the tragedy and insulted them. These are our brothers. If you say to him, Simon Bolivar, he thinks that's a rocker, a singer. He doesn't know who that is. He repeats what the Pentagon writes for him. My voice will never shut up, and my voice will be loud always, with or without Trump. Trump is rude. He is telling me he's going to deal with us and end us. But even with Trump, Venezuela will keep moving forward and will fight for this destiny. I'd like to ask you about that. President Trump has not ruled out military action in Venezuela. Do you take that threat seriously? This is a forum on energy. <laughs> Of course, we can discuss other types of energy, spiritual energy. Let's take a look at this. The president of the largest, the most powerful military power in the world has no right to joke or not be serious. The people of Venezuela are rebellious people. We fight for our freedom. And of course, we have certain threats. Venezuela has no weapons of mass destruction. We have no nuclear weapons, no strategic weapons. We have no significant armed forces or military places abroad. We are a modest country in this sense. And all of a sudden, Trump threatens to attack Venezuela by military force. Of course, all Latin America and Caribbean countries oppose that. And I think the U.S., despite anything, they will have some minimum common sense. Venezuela has one of the largest collections of Russian arms in the region. Amidst this threat of intervention, you're here in Moscow. Will you be, or are you asking President Putin for military assistance and more weapons? As for this Russian assistance, yes. We do have. Russia supports us. Thank goodness there is such a leader in the world, a true leader, with a fast-growing economy like Vladimir Putin. He holds high the flag of peace, dignity. You are asking for more military assistance in a word. We have enough. What we have is enough. But at the same time, there are new arrangements that are coming up, even if we don't ask for it. We are going to be given even more support to defend our sovereignty and our defense capabilities. According to some statistics, in 2016, around three-quarters of Venezuelans... Venezuela is still at important positions in spite of the crisis, in spite of the drop in the oil prices, in spite of the domestic trade and economic war that some entrepreneurs fight against us. Venezuela is investing more than 60% of its available resources in quality-based education and healthcare. 65% of students in the country receive free and good quality public education. Are you saying that there is no food crisis in Venezuela? I never heard this. Who was saying this? Venezuela is facing a global mass media campaign against it. They've been saying Venezuela has so many problems that he probably deserves an intervention. And people said Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Well, let's do an intervention to get rid of this WMD. Let's get the bad guy. The Caribbean Stalin is probably some people think. Let's get Mr. Maduro, and that would be the end of problems. This is a global campaign. As you know, there are cons I want to bring you the very latest out of Venezuela. The top military leaders there today declared their loyalty to President Nicolas Maduro, stating that they will not support what they call a coup to replace him. Now, the reason this is so important is because yesterday, after he was pronounced interim president by uh, Mr. Trump, Juan Guaido pleaded with the military to abandon Mr. Maduro, but see, apparently they did not. Now, in what may be a further blow to the opposition today, Russia warned the United States to butt out of Venezuela. President Putin is uh, putting the U.S. on notice that destructive external interference is a gross violation of the, quote, fundamental norms of international law. But U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is ignoring the Putin admonition. He's attacking Maduro nonetheless. He's calling his regime morally bankrupt, economically uh, incompetent, and profoundly corrupt. Pompeo told this today to a meeting of the 35 members of the Organization of American States here, right here in Washington, D.C. So there you have side. Venezuelan showdown should have most Americans asking a lot of questions about coups, about uh, oil reserves, about sovereignty rights, or lack thereof, and about us intervening, about American interventions abroad. Yes, I have decided to recall all diplomatic and consular personnel from our country stationed abroad and to close all Venezuelan embassies and consular offices in the United States. Speaking. The regime of former President Nicolas Maduro is illegitimate.
We therefore consider all of its declarations and, and actions illegitimate and invalid. Directly after Pompeo spoke, Medea Benjamin of the anti-war group Code Pink denounced U.S. involvement in Venezuelan affairs before being dragged out by security. President Maduro made special mention of that in his address. Today, while Mike Pompeo spoke at the OES, a woman showed up with a sign saying no to a coup d'etat in Venezuela. And that's the people of the United States. A great movement will rise in the U.S. in solidarity to our country and against the imperialist coup d'etat in Venezuela. We thank you. Thank you very, very much. Maduro spoke with Russian President Vladimir Putin by phone. Putin told him, quote, destructive interference from outside grossly violates the fundamental norms of international law. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov also weighed in on the situation in Venezuela. The fact that the United States and a number of other countries, first of all regional ones, immediately recognize the new self-proclaimed interim president only means that they have directly participated in an artificial creation of dual power in Venezuela, which is fraught with chaos and a serious destabilization of the domestic political situation. The Chinese foreign ministry has also voiced support for the Maduro government, as has Turkish President Recep Erdogan, who said he was shocked that the Trump administration recognized a non-elected figure as president of Venezuela. The As you can see, this is a very important situation that is occurring down here in the Caribbean. And if you watch my other videos detailing the whole entire situation and how it's developing, I did warn that there would be war. And they're moving towards it. Brazil is also involved with the new elected president who sided with the United States. They said that they would do anything in their ability to make sure that democracy is restored in Venezuela. Colombia also has sided with the United States. But as you can see, Venezuela has some very powerful, powerful friends. They have Russia, they have China, they have Iran, they have Turkey, they have Syria, and they have a whole host of other Middle Eastern countries that are willing to come up and stand by their side. What you're witnessing here, what you're witnessing here, and why it is so important for the so-called black community, so-called African Americans, the original indigenous of the United States, of North America, is because of decolonization, the new civil rights, the new black power movement. The movement of decolonization for every single so-called black American, African American, original indigenous being to decolonize themselves from the United States government and they're showing the world right now what is going to happen when these things here in the United States come to fruition this is our new thunder for Dark Matter Radio and I tell you the worst is yet to come. The next movement is moving forward. Decolonization of the African American, so called black, original indigenous being from the United States of America. <laughs>